Myanmar is a big country with over 50 million people. It has vast areas of agricultural land with rice, beans, fruits like oranges and mangoes grown. The country has developed very fast in the last three years, with new investments in industries, hotels and other areas. The airport in Yangon has new terminals and facilities nowadays. The young generation has benefited from new investments in education and school. In Yangon, a gentleman bought a four-month-old squirrel as a pet last month. On July 5th, 2019, this squirrel had vomited for three days. This was not normal. The owner brought it to Royal Asia Veterinary Surgery in Yangon to consult veterinarian Dr. Thane Toon Ang. What caused him to vomit? The tattooed gentleman asked. This veterinary file from Myanmar, entitled A Pet Squirrel in Myanmar Vomited for Three Days, is sponsored by Topayo Vets. Royal Asia Veterinary Surgery in Myanmar was established more than 10 years ago. It is a busy practice with a heavy caseload. Various veterinary surgeons like Dr. Mei Tan Wu have practiced here. Dr. Tain Toon Ang's patients are mainly dogs and cats. This pet squirrel was his second squirrel patient. A Saras crane with an injured foot was another exotic pet. Dr. Tain Toon Ang treated a Saras crane in 2014. The squirrel was still active. Dr. Ang took his rectal temperature. It was 99 degrees Fahrenheit. The normal body temperature for a grey squirrel is between 99 degrees and 101 degrees Fahrenheit. He had no fever. What was the cause of the persistent vomiting? Dr. Ang had x-rays taken. A foreign body similar to small stones could be seen inside the stomach or intestines. Two x-rays were taken. No radio-dense foreign bodies were seen. However, there could still be radiolucent foreign bodies which would not be revealed by x-rays. The x-rays showed a cloudy abdomen masking the liver, kidneys, and most intestines. The laboratory aids in diagnosis through, firstly, helping with radiography. Two x-rays were taken. The abdomen was not swollen. It showed radiodense fluid, including peritonitis, but no radiodense foreign bodies. There was gas inside the stomach and intestines. This x-ray can be compared to a normal x-ray of a young squirrel as pictured. The normal abdomen of the young squirrel shows gastric and intestinal contents clearly. This was not good news. What type of cloudy peritoneal fluid was present inside the abdomen? Dr. Ang did a paracentesis, which is the perforation of a cavity of the body or of a cyst or similar outgrowth, especially with a hollow needle to remove fluid or gas. The paracentesis was conducted as follows. Under light gaseous anesthesia, a needle was inserted into the abdomen to draw out peritoneal fluid for examination and bacterial culture and antibiotic sensitivity tests. The normal fluid is usually clear, but this squirrel had reddish-brown fluid, suggesting an infectious peritonitis. Cause is likely due to a penetrating traumatic wound into the abdomen. Possible causes of vomiting include foreign bodies inside the stomach or intestines, which will be revealed by x-rays. Secondly, infections from traumatic injuries inside the abdomen, liver, or kidney disorders can cause vomiting. Poison or toxic chemicals ingested can also cause vomiting. It was not possible to do a toxicology to determine the poison or chemicals. Lastly, anti-flea powder or chemicals applied on the squirrel's body by the owner may cause vomiting. The squirrel may have been poisoned while grooming itself. Treatment includes prevention of further dehydration. Dr. Ang pinched the skin between the shoulder blades. The skin stayed pinched and fell slowly, suggesting that the squirrel was severely dehydrated. Dr. Ang injected subcutaneous fluid and antibiotics. The owner was to keep the squirrel warm inside a box and continue with oral antibiotics and electrolytes to prevent dehydration for the next three days. Finally, the squirrel could be put on oral diet by hand daily if there was no more vomiting after rehydration. Squirrels are omnivores. They like to eat plants, fungi, seeds, nuts and fruits, and meat, including eggs, small insects, caterpillars and small animals. The owner was informed that the prognosis was poor. 
the squirrel had infectious peritonitis. The peritoneal fluid was sucked out slowly. A review after three days was advised. The squirrel had sepsis as the peritoneal fluid was bloody and cloudy. It should be clear and transparent in normal squirrels. He passed away two days later. One possible cause of sepsis could be the rupture of the intestines due to sharp twigs penetrating through the intestinal wall. The owner did not want a post-mortem to check the cause of death. He buried the squirrel. For more information, please call 6254-3326 or 9668-6468. You may also email judy at topayovets.com, 99pups at gmail.com or visit the topayovets.com website. For more Be Kind to Pets veterinary educational videos, please visit topayovets.com slash videos.htm. Thank you.